We're now going to look at uh, terminal alkynes and their hydration reactions. Now, a terminal alkyne is so called because it has a hydrogen on the end of the triple bond, and that means the triple bond is going to be at the end of the chain, hence the name terminal alkyne. The mercury 2 plus in this reaction is catalytic. It's not actually shown in the mechanism, but it's believed to complex with the triple bond and make it more reactive to H plus in this first step. All right, let's take a look at the mechanism. Take it step by step. So we've got our alkyne. The first step is the addition of H plus to the triple bond, which is very much like the addition of H plus to a double bond. So what happens is that we can have two things happen, but only one actually happens. We can join the H to the end, and this H down here is actually this H right here, and the plus goes on the other C. The other possibility would have us put the H here and the plus on the end of the double bond that's here. Now the reason I've angled this downwards is because now we have a double bond which means we're subject to 120 degree bond angles. This was linear, it's 180, so now that's the way it has to be over here. Alright, so now we've got to figure out which one of those actually happens. Well the one that actually happens is the one where the positive charge ends up on this carbon. The reason for that is because the same rules apply to carbocations on double bonds as it does to single bonds. The more carbons there are attached to the C+, plus, the more stable that C plus is going to be. This one has one carbon attached to the C plus, this one has zero carbons attached to the C plus. Effectively it's a primary C plus, so that makes it unstable, which means that won't happen. So the next step then is the water is going to come in, H2O, and is going to attack the positive charge on the C. So now we're going to have the H on the O plus here disappear, just as we have before. The arrow comes from the bond between the OH, goes on to the O plus. and that gives us a compound called an enol. Now the word enol comes from en, which of course means double bond, and then you've got ol, which is OH, so we're talking about a double bond with an OH on it, hence the word enol. Now what we know about enols is that they are in equilibrium with their corresponding keto form and that the equilibrium lies very much on the side of the ketone as opposed to the enol. So the way that we can draw the arrows to show that, they look like this, and what we're showing here is the electrons from the OH bond forming a double bond with the oxygen, and then the, the electrons from the CC double bond forming a CH bond over here. So the H effectively gets transferred from the O to the C. As I said earlier, the equilibrium lies greatly on the side of the ketone and the way I'm showing that is a big arrow going towards the ketone and a little arrow going backwards to the enol. 
Now the other thing that can happen is the enol can be converted to the ketone through a, an acid catalyzed mechanism as well. And since we've got H plus in here, we may as well use it. So the H plus will add to the double bond and the H will go over here and the plus will go over here. The reason for that is because well, for a start, this C is going to be secondary as opposed to primary, which would give a primary C plus if we put the plus on this end. Also, the plus is stabilized by the fact that it's directly under an oxygen. The oxygen is delta minus, so that helps to stabilize that as well. So then we can lose that H plus and form our double bonded oxygen like that. If we wanted to, we could also do that last uh, enol keto conversion in one step. I'll just show you how that might be done. Alright, so here's our enol form. You could do something like this if you wanted. And that would do it in one step instead of two, and that's allowed as well. Now, it's also worth mentioning, go back to the PowerPoint here, that had I made a different choice here, instead of having the H go on the end and put the plus here, if I put the H here and put the plus on the end, then the product I would have ended up with would have been an aldehyde, but this is not what occurs because we would end up with this primary C+, which would be considered to be unstable.